got involved with RWW a couple of years ago after I retired, and I tell you, it's the absolute best thing that I've done since taking off the uniform. My session is called Warrior Transitions. Well, I, I try to take them through my own story, my own experience when I deployed. You go into war, you're hearing about people dying in this place every day. They're sending you there. How does that affect your confidence? And I went to Iraq in 2004. Uh, Fallujah was a different animal. I mean, the first couple of nights, it was, it was nerve wracking. Um, after two nights of very heavy fighting on the streets, um, we began to receive casualties. Our first American casualty in our group happened on the 10th of November. Second Battalion returned to East Camp Fallujah and I was informed that we'd lost Staff Sergeant C. He was shot in the head during a house to house search for insurgents and was unable to recover from his injuries. And I think what was probably, uh, for me, most devastating was looking over at the rack that he occupied the night before and seeing the empty rack. There was that cot and nobody's in it. My doc assigned to that battalion was devastated, and I was too. He was, he was particularly disturbed by this incident because he was the corpsman on scene when it happened. And all of his training, all of his skill, um, and he was well trained, he was a good doc, but he wasn't able to save a, a shipmate. And uh, it, it took a toll on him. He wrote this letter, a very heartfelt letter, and he asked me if I would take the sealed envelope, and if in the event he didn't make it home, ensure that his father got it. On the 21st of December, our mission in Fallujah had come to an end, and the best of my days in the entire deployment was the day when I was able to talk to Mike Fisher and give him that letter back. When Byron spoke this morning, I know others had a lot more difficult tours over there, and then hearing his, it made it easier to talk about mine because if he can open up about something that major and uh, the guy that worked with him and what he went through, I mean, receiving the letter from somebody saying, hey, can you give this to my dad if you know, I don't come home? It just, it's eye-opening. I want them to transition from home to the war zone, but back home with their families and in their communities, because I think it's important for us to leave the war completely. You need to recognize that you're having trouble if you're having trouble. There's no shame Talk to somebody. Talk to your spouse. Consult your higher power if you have a higher power. The biggest step is just realizing that there's something wrong, and then you can do something about it. I think that at the end of the day, the goal is for people to realize they're not alone in whatever their struggles are. They have others who are going through the same thing, and there are resources available to help them uh, reach where they want to be. The smart thing to do now is to come home, all the way home. Come home. They want you home. They realize you made great sacrifices. They want those freedoms that you fought for. But what they want most of all is you. Thank you so much for listening to my story. God bless you. Welcome home.